Hi everyone, I hope everyone's okay. I'm just gonna talk to the camera and say hello for a few minutes. So we're live. We are gonna do something very experimental today. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. It might look like an absolute dog's breakfast by the time we finish, but we're gonna have a play and see what happens. So if you are tuning in, do say hello in chat i can't reply in chat but i can reply on camera so i'm just going to start by threading up some needles and we'll give it a few minutes oh hi <laughs> hi karen great to have you hope you're well enjoying the sunshine i'm just threading up some needles for everybody finds us and we can get going proper so I don't know if you saw the details in my post long things are going to come in handy today so if you've got some textured threads that's really great if you've got um, bits of ribbon that will help I've got some sari silk so I'll go through what I've got in a second and this is going to be double the fun this week. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> Hope it's okay that I call you Sherry. I don't think you've joined us before. Have you joined us before? Is this your first time? Or have you been watching? This is the first time you've commented. Or am I being really forgetful? I don't know. <laughs> so, I've just got some... Um, silco threads here that I'm just threading up so that we can get ready so we're going to play a little game <laughs> do chat to each other as well say lovely things and do the point of doing these live streams is that it's meant to feel a little bit more like community even though we're in different places and different time zones there we go I'll take you through what I've got on my oh thanks for watching I do really appreciate it um, <laughs> I, I might seem slightly more polished in my videos than I will be today <laughs> but you'll just have to bear with me it is what it is so um, I've got, I'll start with my most random thing. So this is some, um, I've got a bundle of sari silk just off camera and it frays like a beast and you get all these little fibres. So I've pulled out some green fibres. So that's the weirdest thing I've got. I've got some textured yarn. I use this in the spring tree video I cut off the yellow bits and I've cut off some green bits today so I that's as much as I could get in a length before it changed to a different colour I've also got I've got another bit there I've got some little strings of wool just tiny little off cuts of wool that I've pulled out of my stash that's synthetic stuff there this is pure wool I've got some sari silk bits, so just little bits there. I've got a bit of velvet ribbon. I don't know that it's going to do what I want it to do, so we'll see about using that. And I've also got some t-shirt yarn. That's a bit of sari silk. This is strips of jersey fabric, and when it's cut, it sort of rolls up, and you can crochet with it and knit with it. And my mum bought me a bag of this stuff and so I've just pulled out some green bits. I've also got a selection of threads here. So I have got some six stranded cottons. So these are six stranded embroidery threads and the rest are linen or silk yarn. So I can't remember which ones are which but I've got all sorts there and this one's a linen i've also got some number eight pearl cotton 
and some number 12 pearl cottons and I've got my favourite thread to stitch with at the moment I just love working with this so this is a sheepies maxi sweet treat and it's 100% cotton it's quite chunky it's similar to pearl cotton but it's more matte so it's it's just a lovely sort of matte super soft cotton that is a joy to stitch with and I'm using these a lot on my planet pieces so I picked out my favourite green from there. I've also got some beads and sequins and I've got some of these ball pins that we have used in the past but haven't used for a while. So I've just got some interesting shaped beads there and I've got my jar of buttons that I may dig into at some point and I'm going to be working on this piece of olive felt as well so uh, this is one of my favourite colours I use it all the time in things that I make so that's what I've got I've also got a ruler and some heat erase pens handy and a selection of needles and that's pretty much it I don't really have anything hiding off camera so while we're just waiting for everybody to find their way here we'll give it a few more minutes this is my page so far so these are my green panels and so week one of June we did our turtle which again just seemed brilliant in my head and seemed to be falling apart as I was stitching it and I think we got there in the end but I think this month has been a month of things seeming good in my head <laughs> and not always working in practice so that was week one then we had the prompt path and I did a reverse applique pepper and learned that <laughs> reverse applique with lame is not fun um, so that is not something I will be trying again and I don't know if I can get it close enough for you to see the lame has just escaped everywhere and I'm still picking little fibres of lame off the felt it, it basically I cut it out of the video because it was just so <laughs> so humiliating but as I was stitching the sandwich together when I brought my needle back up to the surface you can I don't know if you'll be able to see it I've got one here so I wonder if I can just pull it it's a dangerous thing to do so fibers of lame were just pushing through the surface of the felt and coming out and in the end I just had a, a table covered in lame fibres that were just everywhere so it was the bane of my life and then when I cut through I don't know if the camera will pick it up you, you might be able to see it sort of looks stripy and that's where all the missing fibres were so I learned a very important life lesson making that video so I hope it wasn't too awful in practice for you so that was that week I do quite like it as a piece but it's just I feel like I've been scarred by the lame and then last week we did a leafy tree and I just wanted to take the opportunity I have practiced this to make sure it focuses it does get there in the end to show you up close all of the different shades because I couldn't seem to get a photo that captured it and there's probably 10 different shades of green in that one and so the point of that panel was trying out thread blending and exploring all the ways that you can combine threads to just make a piece look really lively and vibrant and quite organic as well so that was our leafy tree I'm loving the tree pieces I hope you enjoy them so this week we're going to play a little bit of a game and as I said right at the beginning this may or may not work, might look awful, might look amazing, who knows. So we're going to bring, uh, I'm just inspired by summer sporting events, so my favourite one starts, is it tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow, Wimbledon? Maybe next week and um, you'll have to let me. <laughs> 
uh, let me know when it starts because I do love Wimbledon. So I thought we could have a game of play the ball where it lies. So I know that's not a tennis reference, it's golf. But what I'm planning to do is make a completely abstract panel that is just going to be random and we're going to let nature take its course. So I'm just going to check my comments because I've been talking constantly. So hi Sue, glad you've been able to join us. I suspect there'll be lots of people out enjoying the sunshine this afternoon. So I don't know how many people are going to get live, but who knows? We'll just have a little tea party. Um, and there's always more people watching. It starts tomorrow. I thought it did, but I feel like I've lost a week somewhere. Um, so yeah, we, we'll just have a little tea party there's always more people watching than commenting so um I, we'll see later on so if you want to stitch along i hope you've got your long things with you and we're going to start with the bigger chunkier long things so what i'm going to do i hope this works because it's going to be very embarrassing if it doesn't what i'm going to do is just hold it above vertically and I'm just going to let it fall like that and then I'm going to get another piece and let it fall and I'm trying desperately hard to resist the urge to move things around because I, I do want it to be completely natural um, I'm going to leave my velvet ribbon because it's so thick I just don't know whether it's going to do what I want it to do so that's a bit of sari silk and then we're going to have another bit of sari silk and I'm not worried that it's overlapping we're going to trim those bits off so let's have a bit of wool you can plan a little bit what you want on the surface and what you want to recede a little bit so I'm just dropping bits of wool <laughs> this looks like an absolute state doesn't it and let's have my sari silk fibers let's pull them out a little bit just tease them out and just drop those on oh I nearly moved it there then some textured yarn oh it stuck to my finger I'm just going to do that again like that and I think we'll leave it there so it's a it's a little bit wild that I'm slightly worried that I've overdone it and now we can't see the felt coming through wonder if I should take something off no we're just gonna leave it so what I'm doing now is if you've got some uh, fusible what do we call it soluble water soluble stabiliser you could put it over the top if you want to and just stick it all down but I'm just going to pin because I can't easily in a live session rinse off stabiliser and dry it I'm trying to be able to do anything with it so I'm just going to put some pins in we're just going to make a beautiful mess hope it's going to be beautiful and not just a mess so I'm just putting a few pins in here and there just to hold things down until we can secure them with thread if you see me moving things around then um, you'll have to chat in chat and tell me not to so I'm I've got some just ordinary sewing cotton and what I'm going to do is just catch these bits down just enough hi Alison glad you're here so we're just going to catch these down with just some little 
to add stitches over the surface. I don't know why I came up with this idea. I was going to do it last month and the felt pennies just were too exciting so that's what I went with instead. So we're just going to hold these in place and then my plan is to over stitch with our decorative lines. So we're going to have chaos underneath and then we're going to bring some order by putting our decorative lines over the top. And when I've got enough stitches in that everything's sort of stable, I'm going to trim around the edge and get rid of the excess and we'll get a better sense of what it looks like then. So our stitching is going to tame the chaos a little bit. So this one is going to split the split the crowd. I think it's um, you're either going to love this one or hate it. If you quite like random things, you'll enjoy it, and if you like order, you might not. I am very much a fan of order, and so this is quite a challenge for me to do something this chaotic. I'm just working my way around. I've tried not to leave massive trails on the back, but there will be some trails just naturally because we're stitching quite randomly. So I hope everybody's well. I've been ironing this morning and I don't know if you can see, I've got a very red thumb because I caught, I haven't done it for I don't know how long, but typically on a day where my hands are going to be on show, I caught my thumb in the steam from the iron and burnt myself a little bit. So we've been, I've been ironing this morning, editing a video. My daughter's been madly um, sketching, so she's had another burst of creativity and has been exploring people so she's that sounded bad she's not been exploring people she's been <laughs> exploring drawing people and has been practicing faces and eyes so she's been doing that and my son is home from university and he's busily trying to find some work for over the summer and may or may not have got a bite from one of his billions of applications that he's been doing so and my hubby has been pottering around sorting out washing and being very helpful he's been a bit of a star this weekend because i felt like i've got quite a lot of deadlines all at once so it's quite nice that he's stepped in He's got a few deadlines of his own, but um, he wanted to help me out, so that was lovely of him. So let me know what you've been up to today, and I'm going to get just some paper scissors because I don't think my embroidery scissors are going to cut it, cut it, no pun intended, and I'm just going to trim away what's around the outside. Now I've caught things down. So we're just going to, actually if I do it that way around I can see where the felt is and then I won't accidentally cut my felt. So I'm making a right mess here. This is very out of character for me. I'm finding this very challenging. <laughs> very much grip in my hand either or squeeze power so it's quite hard it's the t-shirt yarn I wonder if I've made a mistake using that just use what you've got and what your hands can cope with I suppose so let's get all this 
mess out of the way and as ever just to reassure you none of that will be wasted it all goes into my scrap project and you might see it in a planet hoop in the future so I'm just checking comments before they all disappear off the top of the screen um, we've got another new face El Jean welcome glad you're here I hope this doesn't put you off because <laughs> I've never done anything quite this bizarre in a live stream before but we'll see what happens yeah seed stitch randomness is very difficult um, I'm, I'm glad that you found the turning your work thing helpful it's I, I now do it once you've got into the habit of doing it you'll find that you do it without thinking and it just happens so I don't consciously really think about turning anymore but you'll you'll notice in my videos and today I'll just be turning it without even knowing I'm doing it so um, I'm so glad Karen by the way that you enjoyed doing that gemstone hoop and um, I'm I thought your finished version was amazing so um, if you don't know what I'm talking about have a look on our website I've got a series of birthstone hoops and I'm worried about getting the July one ready in time because I'm you know how sometimes you get to a pinch point in life and everything seems to converge all at once and there's loads going on and you don't know how it happened that's that's one of them <laughs> it's one of those at the moment so lots going on not enough hours in the day so there we go right I think that's pretty secure now so we're just gonna tie that off at the back so I'm carrying on with green obviously because I follow the colour for my panels each month now this bit's going to be challenging let's see if we can make something work so I'm just going to draw some lines as a guide I'm going to try and draw some lines just to guide me so it is just going to be little dabs of colour so I've got a heat erase pen here and I'm hoping it's just going to show up enough I don't think the white one is let's try the blue one shows up a little bit better so because everything's not totally fixed in place it it does want to move every time a pen touches it so I might just have to eyeball it I'm just going to eyeball it that's not going to work so I do wing it this is proof if proof were needed but I do wing it as our project title suggests I am making this up as I go along and seeing what happens so I've got a couple of strands of six stranded cotton and if I just can mark off the halfway point that will give me a start and my square is 10 centimeters so I'm just going to put a little mark at the edge Just marking the felt underneath because I've got something to aim for at least so I can get to the felt through all the threads and right so let's start in the middle and one that we haven't used very much this month is arrowhead stitch I seem to have sort of forgotten that that was one of them so let's do a line of arrowhead stitch and what I'm hoping is I'm gonna make these quite big what I'm hoping is that uh, over stitching sort of tames the chaos a little bit so just looking at comments see what everybody's been up to Karen's been tidying and decluttering I do love decluttering it's it's just so satisfying when it all comes together and looks amazing 
at the end so have you found anything you'd forgotten you had in your declutter I wonder I always seem to find something that I've forgotten about when I declutter so some of the stitching is going to disappear at first because it's going to get caught into the, the jumble on the surface but we'll just keep adding layers of stitch and hopefully we're just going to end up with a crazy background underneath some very orderly and organised stitching So if you're not sure about arrowhead stitch, it is in our stitch guide for June. It's probably the simplest one because it's just made up of straight stitches. So you do a diagonal straight stitch one way and then you do another straight stitch coming to meet it. My needle's too big for my thread on seven so a little straight stitch in the opposite direction coming to meet it at the point and as ever like we learned with the turtle my style is to just keep going until I'm happy with the way it looks so promise I won't keep you here all night <laughs> trying to make this look right but um, we'll see what we can do so Sue's loving the idea I, I love how open to experiment you are Sue it's, uh, it's fab I do find that every piece though goes through an awkward teenager stage where it just looks like a catastrophe and I've done my favourite trick of not leaving enough thread again must stop doing that Alison's in the order over chaos camp like me so that's good now I've just realized that I don't think I've got that green out so now I'm going to have a different shade of green but I don't think that's the end of the world let's do some this is easier to control let's do a bit of pearl cotton So I don't know if you can see those arrowhead stitches in there, they are there and the more different tones of green we add the easier it's going to be able to see and I can always um, add some another layer of arrowhead stitches in between these ones so arrowhead stitch looks really good when you collapse it quite close together so I might add in, in fact I've overlapped there anyway so if you haven't seen my planet hoops I've just revealed Mars over on Instagram and the reason I mention those is that they are purely experimental and I had this idea of creating pieces by using scrap fabrics and over stitching them and because I just love the effect of over stitching and so I decided to make a solar system using all my scraps 
from other projects so I don't throw things away I have got a massive jar of scrap thread which I just like looking at so I don't tend to use very much of it but I also have a box of tiny fabric scraps so these are really really small pieces of fabric that are never going to be used for anything substantial now sometimes I use them for a plique but I wanted to find a way of reducing the waste from my creating to almost nothing and so that's what inspired the plants and I'm really enjoying making them so it was as I was making one of my planets that I thought I wonder if we could do this with scraps of thread and bits and bobs of, of just stuff that we have in our stashes and just try the over stitching approach and see what happens we may love it we may hate it right, the jury's out for me at the minute <laughs> I don't know I think I haven't reached an awkward teenager stage I think I'm in the angry toddler stage at the minute but if it doesn't work we just put it down to experience it will still go in the book and we'll just add a little note saying never do that again but I think I think it'll I think it'll come out all right so I'm going to do a very light green because I think everything on my in my long things collection was quite mid-tone or dark so I want to add something very light I think I'm going to do this one here this is sort of minty green and I don't know where the end is there it is So do let me know if you're stitching along and giving this a go or whether you're just watching and you're going to do something better <laughs> later. Um, who knows? And you can also let me know in the chat who's watching Wimbledon this year. Is anyone else into Wimbledon or is it just not your thing? If it's not your thing are there any summer sporting events that you do enjoy just mess that up right let's do a line of herringbone stitch and start at the top really love herringbone stitch I might do a double layer of it here and mix two different shades Uh, July, I'm starting to think about July as well and our July stitch guide should go live tomorrow and it's a really good one <laughs> it's uh, some of my absolute all time favourite stitches so and there's quite a lot of them so I normally just do four or, four or five but I've got ten in this video so it's a slightly longer video, not massively longer, a little bit longer, but I just wanted to give you lots of scope to really play. So we've got some great ones coming. So hopefully, depends how long it takes to upload. Oh, Glastonbury. I haven't watched any Glastonbury yet, but I did, um, I was listening to some sort of past uh, legend sets yesterday on the radio 
also like her sort of family which made me very happy that was a great set I do like watching all the historic ones it's it's never something I've wanted to go to though um, my husband loves live music and I'm not as much of a fan I don't really like crowds so it's um, it's quite a lot for me going to a concert because there's just so many people Oh no, <laughs> Sherry, I hope your fingers get better soon. Um, got some herringbone. I'm going to put another layer of herringbone in a different colour. I think I'm going to use some of this really bright line linen thread so i got this from um, studio flax bought a second treasure box they call them and it's it's just a selection of threads and some vintage fabrics so i got a little bit of linen fabric and a piece of patchwork i think and a selection of yellowish threads and this one is more green than it is yellow I think so um, I just love it so let's get a bit of zing in there I love interlocking so I'm just interlocking my herringbone lines there Sherry, is that eight weeks since you've had your operation? I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't sew for eight weeks. I'd lose my mind, I think. But I do very much like you. I love watching people making things on the internet. So I do spend quite a lot of time on YouTube watching people do things that I'll never do. I, I think I sort of think oh, I will I'd love to make that at some point but um, I probably will never get around to it but I just love watching people making lovely things so this is not a lovely thing at the moment <laughs> but um, yeah we'll see so Alison when you went to Glastonbury who was playing do you have any memories of who was playing? Again, for me, it's it's the just the sheer number of people that are there. I just I'm not sure I'd cope very well.
Oh wow, Sinead O'Connor, that must have been awesome. She's uh, she really has uh, an amazing voice. So happy Mondays! Can't get more nineties than that. I'm very much a nineties person. That was my my youth was the 90s, just a little bit of the 80s, but uh, I've broken my glasses, so I'm also, you'll have to bear with me because I'm also doing this not fully able to see. <laughs> where are you based Sherry are you in the UK or are you somewhere more exotic I'm very touched that you've got your friends involved as well so um, yeah things have gone slightly berserk on my channel i never really expected anyone to watch anything so it's it's got very lively in the last couple of weeks i don't know what is happening with the algorithm i'm just doing some chevron stitch now and again i think i'm gonna put another layer in between but all these stitches are in that stitch tutorial video not the neatest stitching I've ever done but it's it's not easy stitching through all this stuff I do think I've put too much on I think I need to learn more at less is more I, I'm not very good at it <laughs> I, I never really know when to stop always overdo things so um, but you know it's exciting. Too many lovely things to play with. Oh, cool. Right. So, Arizona. I, I lived in South Africa for a year and I, I don't know, people in Britain always complain about the weather and people in other countries just don't get what our problem is, I don't think, because it's either too wet or it's too cold or it's too hot and the problem is my theory is that the reason why the British are obsessed with the weather is that we have no warning so we could have two weeks that feel like midwinter and then a total heat wave and a couple of weeks ago it was 11 degrees and we turned all our heating off because it's June and we had to get our little portable radiator in to the lounge because it was so cold that I couldn't feel my fingers and then literally a week later it's 30 degrees and our problem is that we don't get any warning about temperature changes it can literally change by 20 degrees from one day to the next and so you never get time to acclimatise and the reason I'm talking about this is because I think I could cope better living I don't really like summer and I don't like heat but when I lived in South Africa I found that I was much better able to cope with the heat because it's a different kind of heat uh, I've only been to America once and we went to Florida to do the obligatory trip to Disney World once in our life and it was so hot I've never experienced anything like it I've never I've never in my life experienced 100% humidity and I just couldn't wrap my brain around the fact that it could be so hot and yet you can hang a towel out side to dry and it's wetter when you come home than when you left it out because 
the air just it nothing can evaporate because the air is so full of moisture that blew my mind never never experienced that in my life before so i've got a variegated one here it's only slightly variegated but i'm gonna interlock another layer of chevron stitch can't thread it now because I can't see. Just need a different needle, one that I can actually see. Just lay off one. There we go. So, yeah, I think tropical is what I can't cope with. So, I think Arizona might be doable for me because it's I, I think i'm right in saying it's very dry it's desert it's, it's dry desert um so yeah i'm i'm not good with humidity so i think i've learned over the years that it's not heat that i struggle with it's humidity that i just I don't know, I find it so unbearable that I feel like I could just cry. Um, it's that horrible feeling of not being able to do anything to cool down. You can't even cool down with sweat because it can't evaporate. So you just feel hot and it's unpleasant. Um, so yeah, I don't, don't know that I'm ever going to go anywhere tropical in my life. It's just not my thing at all deserts though I think I could quite enjoy so uh, who would who would say they were summer people and I, my favorite seasons are spring and autumn and I like the sun but I don't like heat and I certainly don't like the sudden dramatic changes that we get in the UK so um I'm, I'm very much a sort of temperate season kind of person so is anyone a bit of a sun worshipper my husband is from Italy and he absolutely loves summer loves it when it's sunny always wants to be somewhere hot Every winter, he talks about us moving somewhere more <laughs> southern and sunny. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not for me. I think I belong in a Daphne du Maurier novel or... Um, Bronte novel. I quite like wild landscapes and bleak, stormy looking skies and being in the middle of nowhere. That's more my thing. So, and don't get me started on beaches because I absolutely can't abide sand at all. Oh, I've got a ream stuck a bit there. Don't know what I'm stitching to. Oh, hay fever's just awful. Do you get like streaming eyes, or is it more like just you feel sort of heady? <laughs> Sue, I'm so glad I'm not alone. I I always feel like it. A bit of an oddball for not liking summer because everybody seems to love it but it's it's just not for me not british summer anyway right it's starting to get a bit tamer so i don't know if you can see there i've got my herringbone at the top and then i've got my chevron stitch so i'm going to do some cretan stitch now starting to get a bit tamer i'm still not convinced that this was a good idea 
we'll, we'll see. This just might be one that lives in posterity. It's the worst idea I've ever had, but um, there's still time. It could still come round. I'm going to put some sequiny bits and things on it as well, so hopefully that will add a bit more life as well. So I've got a really bright green pearl cotton there. It's, it's a lovely sort of vibrant grassy green. So Crete and Stitch is the one with the vertical in it, where you catch the working thread and you get a little sort of... never know how to quite describe it. You'll be able to see it in a minute. Oh yeah, the sand as well. I just, I don't get it. And I find, I find beaches boring. <laughs> I, I, I know everybody plays like volleyball or so, but sunbathing, I don't understand sunbathing. And the problem with beaches for me is that there are no trees. And which might sound like a really stupid thing to say, but um, there's nowhere to go. You're just exposed all day in blazing heat and you can't get any relief from it. There's nowhere to go and the sun blows in your face and goes in your mouth and wrecks your picnic and I just, I just don't understand it and then you find sand everywhere for weeks and months to come just don't get it so we I always have to endure at least one day at the beach every year because my daughter just loves it she loves she's a summer baby loves the sun loves being at the beach loves the sand what we do I ought to post something on Instagram we do make epic sand sculptures because I think if I've got to endure being on a beach, I am going to do something fun. And so I just grit my teeth and try not to think about the fact that I'm touching sand. And we make all sorts of elaborate things. So we've made a race car before. We've made a speedboat, I think. We've made a giant tarantula. We've made a mermaid, life-size mermaid. We've made, um, uh, did I say a dinosaur? Yeah, we made, I think we've done two dinosaurs. One that looked more like bones and one that looked like a whole dinosaur emerging from the sand. And the most difficult thing we've ever made, it didn't look at the most impressive, but we tried to go vertical one year and make a lighthouse and that was unbelievably challenging it was really really tricky because it always wants to collapse under its own weight so we had to come up with some quite ingenious ways of making it stand I think we got to about three and a half feet tall in the end and we made a sort of mountain road leading up to the lighthouse and a like a Durdle door, see a Durdle door. Um, in Dur in Dorset, the the sort of archway, natural archway. I'm finding myself interlocking all these stitches. By the way, um, I don't I don't know why. I just quite like the the overlapping shades of green. So yeah. No, we, it's got to be epic. If we're going to do it, it's got to be epic. And I quite like, I, I spend so much of my time making art that's going to last forever. I quite like the fact that you make a sand sculpture and when the tide comes in, it's gone. Um, so I quite like how temporary it all is. We've got a great beach in Lincolnshire. Well, we've got several great beaches in Lincolnshire, but um, there's a place called Sutton-on-Sea, which has just got fantastic 
sand for building things with. It's it's really, really just clumps together in just the right way. And so that's where we mostly make our creations. So if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. We're going to go big. <laughs> and that's, that's very much our style. Yeah, I think I, I need to get... We do collect shells, but I think I, I've never really done proper beach combing where you're looking for glass and bits of pottery and things like that. And I think maybe that's something that I need to investigate because I do... I do quite like hunting for things. I used to go rock pooling in Wales. We, we only ever went to Wales when I was a kid. And um, it's the, the place where we stayed in a caravan and there was a great beach for rock pooling. It was a terrible beach if you want a beach, but for rock pooling it was amazing. And um, we used to find all sorts collect it all in a bucket and then release it all again at the end of the day so we just see what we could find and then let it all go back to the sea and uh, I've got a bit of a problem with seaweed as well all these neuroses that I've got so let me show you where we're up to so far so still looking a little bit weird for my liking but um, we're going to persevere Let's go get some of this blue green in. I'm trying to think of the other stitches that we uh, explored. I think there were only four. Can't quite remember. Have I missed any? Got arrowhead stitch, herringbone, chevron, Cretan. Let's just use some of our other stitches as well. Let's do a chain stitch. So I've got this sort of blue, grey, green, and I'm just going to do quite a big chain stitch. Just to add something else. So I've talked a lot about what I don't like on holiday. Maybe I should uh, talk about things that I do like. So wh why don't you let me know what your ideal holiday is? So mine involves, definitely involves water. So I love rivers and lakes. I love mountains. So I quite like, as I say, I like wild landscapes. So mountains and moors and um, I I absolutely love Devon and Cornwall because it's so wild. Absolutely adore the Lake District and the Peak District and Scotland has a very special place in my heart because although my husband was born in Italy, he spent most of his life in Scotland and uh, moved to the UK when he was five. And so... He, uh, we've we've spent lots of time in Scotland over the years, and that is just one of my favourite places in all the world. So that's really my idea of a great holiday. It's more countryside than beach. I really love forests as well. So we had a holiday at Kilda Forest Park a few years ago before COVID and um, we just loved it there. So all that sort of thing. Right, I'm going to take a little bit more bulk out of this because I've got quite a lot of overhang. So I'm just going to trim that back a little bit more. 
so I can see what I'm doing. Got a line of chain stitch in there. I don't know. Let's do some blanket stitch. Let's get some more acid green in. Just quite like these. Those ingy greens. Let's do cross stitch actually. Let's do a line of quite random looking crosses. You can suggest um, some stitches for me. What what do we think would improve this monstrosity? <laughs> Dumfries, yeah, Dumfries and Galloway. It's it's just you feel like you're literally on the cusp of something in Dumfries and Galloway, don't you? Because it's it's sort of the gateway into Scotland, and it just feels like you're at the edge of of something epic when you're there. Just love it, and I I love the fact that you can be driving along a back road at the top of the Lake District and suddenly you're in Scotland and I just love the way that Scotland kind of sneaks up on you when you're in that part of the world. It's fab. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's fun. Whether it's going to make a beautiful part of our green page, I I do not know. So we just we're just playing, and we're doing a bit of a, a stitch sampler. This is meant to be slow stitch, so we're just doing what we can make it look better <laughs> it's it is going to be a love it or hate it kind of thing but i mean it is uh, i suppose uh, a fun mix of random and orderly so we've just got our random background it looks almost mossy i suppose it looks a bit sort of forest floor Quite organic, a bit wild, and definitely unlike any of our other panels. So, um, yeah, it, it's offering us something new and different, I suppose, if nothing, if nothing else. Maybe I need something very dark. I'm getting some light flashes coming through but I wonder if I need something dark and I'm just gonna I've got five strands here I must have taken a strand out of something else another time so I'm just gonna do a really chunky one so I'm using four strands Mm. 
a bit more through the needle at the same time. There we go. Oh, fly stitch. It's one of my favourite stitches. I've totally forgot about fly stitch. I think when you get into, I've been using some very particular stitches as we've been, as I've been getting ready for our July stitch guide. And that's sort of what's in my head. And I think you you do get into a routine, don't you, of using a certain certain stitches and you forget other ones exist. Well done, C. <laughs> I love fly stitch. I'm trying not to use any stitches that we haven't covered so far. It's very tempting. We've got some great ones coming up for July and I so want to use them, but I'm not going to. I'm just sort of showcasing the stitches that we've learnt so far. I want to do a wheat ear as well. Yeah, I think Fling's going to bring it to life, I think. I just, I didn't think I liked beads quite as much as I did, but I, I've been using them so much this year that now nothing I make seems quite finished until it's got some something sparkly added. And I'm not a blingy person at all. I hardly ever wear jewellery. Um, and it just... I don't know what's happened to me <laughs> this year it's been all about the beads just love it something very tough underneath here I think it's the t-shirt yarn it's fine when I can see it but it's obviously sometimes it's hidden by other things that are sitting on top of it and it takes me by surprise every now and again this might be the scruffiest line of feather fly stitch I've ever sewn in my life I keep hitting the t-shirt yarn It's going to need a really good press from the back. I think it's gone very lumpy and bumpy. How's it looking? Right, so that's where we're up to so far. So if I bring it up, you should be able to see it. It does look very organic, very mossy. I quite like that. Right, I might add another line of stitch a little bit later, but I, now I've started talking about beads, I just want to put some beads on. So I'm going to use some of this uh, machine silk that isn't silk because I'm going to need 
need to be able to get it through a needle we'll just try and find a needle that will go through some beads right let's start with some sequins now I was going to just drop these on and I did practice doing that and it worked but I didn't practice when um, after stitching it down so let's try it I do think they're just going to bounce off and disappear oh no look they, they do back oh no that's gone totally <laughs> right no <laughs> oh crikey anyone tuning in now is going to think that no I don't think that's going to work no they just bounced so I'm just going to have to position these so this this can be part of the adding order to chaos thing that I'm trying to do so I'm just going to put some little groups of sequins and attach them in the more traditional way so we've attached them with little beads on top but I'm just going to put some stitches through the hole and over the side if I can find the hole Oh, you don't know what you've got until it's gone I rely on my glasses so much I feel like I can't see anything they're properly broken as well the, the arm has fallen off so they won't sit on my face <laughs> properly anymore they just go off to a, an angle at the side So I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody's version of this. I wonder how many of you are going to just think that that is the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and how many of you are going to have a go. But it'll be interesting to see what people do with this prompt. Now I can't pick the sequins up. Oh, it's all falling apart. So I'm just going to put them in little clusters of odd numbers. Oh, I loved your baby turtle, Sue. I thought it was a lovely take on it. So I've got. Let's let's actually go for five. I always do things in threes and sometimes three's just not enough. Hardly ever use sequins because they're just too blingy for me. But I think let's just throw everything at this one. And we'll see what happens. And everything in the background is quite matte, and I think it doesn't hurt to add a different sort of surface texture so we've got things that are silky and things that are fluffy but we haven't got anything that's sort of shiny in the background I'm finding it really hard because I can't feel where my needle is through all the layers of stuff I'm struggling to find the center of the sequin but um it's all right I seem to say this every month as well but I've I've finished filming next week's video I've just got to finish off editing it it's an absolute doozy next week I I love it so much it, it's my <laughs> I do say this every week it's my new favorite 
panel I think it's re it's just so lovely um so that's one to look forward to and it's it's like the polar opposite of this it's very orderly and precise so not like this chaos at all I think this one's all about texture really it's just playing around with the chaos underneath and trying to tame it a little bit on the surface and if it's not your thing that's perfectly fine I'm not entirely certain it's my thing so but I thought we'll try it and see what happens And next month's live is going to be a lot of fun and I might have my special guest back again next month. So those of you that watched back in February, I think it was, maybe March, February, um, my daughter was joining in and teaching us all about English paper piecing. So she decided five minutes before this session started that she wanted to join in but I haven't set up for a second person in the room so um, so that maybe she can come in next month and we're doing something quite fun next month um, with holidays in mind so that's as much of a hint as I'll give you Yeah, Karen, that, that would have been the way to do it, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm just noticing your suggestion. That that would have been the way to do it, but I, I panicked. And um, so we're just placing them there. I don't know whether that takes it. You can maybe use that technique when you're making your own. Let me know how it goes. I think my aperture would have worked as well. I'm going to bring my aperture in in a minute because I think nothing looks good when you've got all the ragged edges and I think it, it will help me to see what it's actually really looking like so I'm just going to add a few more bits and bobs I'm liking it more now there's some something else going on I quite like that extra texture oh so sorry so that's already feeling better for me so let's keep going with that because it's it's helping I've got these funny looking I don't know whether they're meant to be like this or whether I, I made um like a wind chime out of beads ages ago and it was outside and then it's just the the thread that I'd used to string all the beads up broke and I ended up with beads all over the floor and I think these are beads that I salvaged and they're all sort of washed out and they've got a sort of I don't know whether you can see that very well I can't bend my wrist back enough um, to get the flat of my hand but yeah it's a flat hand um, so they're all sort of washed out and mottled and the paint's washed away and I just I quite like how weathered they look I wonder if these will bounce oh no look there we go that's found its home let me put that one where it oh no <laughs> oh it was going so well it was about there I think <laughs> it was going so well and then I fumbled it
I'm just going to put some of these weathered beads in. I'll go over those a couple of times because this thread's very thin and the beads are very big. Let's try another one, see if it will sit somewhere, there we go. Try not to drop it this time. go right that's next to those two sequins that's too far away so I'm going to finish off my thread on the back I'm concentrating hard now so I'm talking less <laughs> Right, that was against those two like that. So that's where that one's going. Yeah, I'm going to, the buttons are coming next. <laughs> um, I've just got a couple more. I've got these lovely, I don't know whether this is going to pick up at all on camera. Let's see how close I can get it. They're sort of oily looking and they've got sort of, they're very dark and they've got this sort of green, oily sort of quality to them that I quite like. Oh, great. They're all going to cover each other up now. So I'm trying, I'm trying to play the ball where it lies. <laughs> Can't remember where the hole was. Right, let's have a look. Sorry, I can't see the hole because it's dark. Let's have another one of those. They're quite a nice size as well. Oh no, it can't land next to it. Oh no. No, that's just going to bounce. Oh, right in the corner. Right, I'm going to have to end my thread again. I'm hoping the buttons will fall better because they're flat. So they won't and they've got more weight than a sequin so I'm hoping that they will 
ball in a more appropriate spot way. Um, Have we, um, just, it's just come to mind, have we um, been watching the sewing bee as well? I don't know if you get it in America. Sherry, do you, do you get the Great British Sewing Bee in America? I, I don't know. Maybe BBC America has it. Who are we, um, if, you, if you are watching it, so you're all going to tell me that you're not now, but um, who's our money on to win? I totally agree, Karen. I, I I am all about texture. You might have spotted that as the videos have gone on through the year. I absolutely love texture in anything I create. And so working in a single colour, definitely you, you have to get your contrast in different ways. And so it does, it's all about... It, it has been all about playing with textures this month. Right, let me get one more of those beads on. No, that wants to go. No, I'm just going to have to place it, I think. Where? Let's put it there. There's a little bit of a space where there isn't anything. There we go. Let me get my aperture. If I can find it. Thank you. And um, if you haven't seen me do this before, I just cut out, I use it when I'm filming the design ideas parts of my videos. I just cut out an 8x8 square from a piece of black card and I lay it over the top. And it gives me a much better sense. Oh, see, now I've done that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> it's amazing what an aperture will do for a piece of work because it makes it look finished in a way that you can't visualise. Um, hi, Ray. So if I bring that up to the surface, suddenly you can see much better what it actually looks like and that has completely rocked my world i love that in ways that i never expected <laughs> because it was just looking horrific so ray you <laughs> thank you ray you must be thinking that something very strange has gone on <laughs> in the earlier part of this video hopefully it'll make sense if you watch it back but I'm loving that. So we're going to add some beads. Oh, suddenly I'm, I'm not feeling embarrassed <laughs> anymore. So I'm just going to mute my microphone for one second while I tip these bit, uh, buttons out. There we go. Right. I thought you could all do without the sound of crashing buttons. So I've got all sorts in here. If anyone sees anything they like the look of, do give me a shout. So I've got, I've got all sorts. I've got some of these very early plastic ones that are quite nice. I've got a bit of texture around the edge. And that's a sort of greeny blue wooden one with the dashes around the edge. That's a bit weird. That looks like it's melted. I'm sure it hasn't. That must be... It almost feels like Bakelite, that. I didn't think Bakelite could be coloured like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to leave those there. If you spot... Oh, that's an interesting one. Look at that one. It's like... Woven. I didn't, I didn't know 
I don't know what I've got really. I inherited my grandma's button box. That's a nice one as well. So um, give me a shout in the comments. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, find a button that you like the look of and we'll drop it on and see what happens. I think I'm going to take the opportunity to do dealer's choice and I really like these olive um, buttons so I've got some really teeny tiny ones there as well look some mint see really tiny mint one and a dark green one and I've got a little sort of lime green one that's a flower so let me know what you've got your eye on I'm gonna put in an olive one because I just love olive I just need to choose which olive one I want I'm going to go for one of these that's got a rim around the outside. So let's, no, <laughs> I think I've said the word no more than anything, any other word this time. Right, I'm going to go, over, no, <laughs> just ba bounces off other stuff. Oh no, oh it's terrible. This is so, <laughs> give up. Right, let's just place it. So I'm going to put it over here. And finish that thread off. There's only a limit. There's a limit to randomness. There we go. That's what we've learned this week. So there's a limit to how random things can be because nature will not allow complete randomness. There we go. Let's get a bit of philosophy in. <laughs> so it was that way up. I was going to put it over here. So Ray, if you haven't worked it out so far, um, we're trying to be random and we're taming randomness with lines of stitching. So when I hold it up close to the camera, you'll be able, hopefully you'll be able to see the lines of stitching. I quite like the fact that the stitching is almost hidden because it's doing something really functional but it, it's not about the stitching this one it, because you can't see it as clearly as you can see the other things it's all about the texture and that's a very different kind of we've done a couple recently that are lots of embroidery and so it's quite nice to have something that's very different we definitely don't have another panel like this at all so far Right, which buttons? Barley twist one. This one. Is this is this the one that you mean, Karen? The buttons aren't very focused. It's a problem with audio. Is it that one that you mean? I always think that it, that one looks a little bit like a cocoon. <laughs> um, where can we put that? I want to go for that old. No. No. <laughs> no. Where should I put it? You'll have to give me a shout. Tell me where to put it. Maybe it needs to go down here somewhere. Up here. Well, just sit it there. Somebody said about the woven one. And um, Ray wants a, a lime green one. Right, so let's get a lime green. Do you want the flowery lime green one, Ray? Or... Just a circular lime green one, or this. Oh, this one's interesting. This one's got sort of. Um, I'm hoping that the camera can pick it up. It's got sort of streaks in it, so that's probably. Can it do it? I'm trying to hide all the other things in the background, so that the camera can focus on the button. No, it's not liking it. Um, it's sort of streaky, I quite like that one. So let's put this woven one in. Let's put it off to the side. Oh, I forgot I hadn't thrown that one off.
vote. Karen, tell me where you think it should go. I like the fact that this one, because it's a shank button, it's going to move a little bit. So we get, we get. I'm so sorry about the crashing. I don't, I don't mean to drop things. <laughs> move that as well. That's not helping matters. Where should it go, Karen? Up here, do we think? Somewhere like that? <laughs> um, that That is me, Karen. These live streams were a challenge to get my head around because I can't be anything other than myself and so this is what I'm like all day, every day. I'm just trying to work out where this one should go. Maybe like that, something like that. Let's put it there. That seems like as good a place as any. And then I'm going to get a lime green one on for Ray. So as somebody who is a... I, I've just done a Myers-Briggs test very recently and I came out as 95% introvert, which might be a surprise because I'm posting things on the internet and things like that but it's taken me 47 years I'm 47 now and that's how long it's taken me to be willing to be out in the world um, and so yeah I, it, I'll have to have a lie down after this <laughs> because um, yeah, I've been more exposed in this video than than in most others. Right, let's get a lime green one. Um, yeah, I, I am aware that I'm rotating it left, right and centre. Um, let's put a lime green one in just near to this one, I think. That seems like a nice place to put it. And then... We might just call it a day. Particularly as I've just said that I find it hard to know when to stop. I could just keep adding. I keep seeing nice new buttons. And I could keep adding them. But I'm going to resist the urge. Where was the uh, t-shirt bit before, Karen? I, because I've totally lost all sense of what direction we're working in. Oh, Alison, that's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> it's It's been one of the best experiences of my life doing this project. I have to say, it's just... You're all so lovely and supportive and encouraging and it's just a joy every week to see what you come up with. I absolutely love seeing your panels pop up on my feed. It's just lovely. So I'll put the lime green flower on because why not? And I've just got one more bead that I've picked out specifically and haven't put it on yet. And it just gives another opportunity for a little bit of more of that bright lime green up towards the top. Because I'm very aware that this neon green is very much at the bottom. And I've found this sort of, um, it's got sort of fins on it I suppose. Um, this little bead so I'm just going to add that one on I picked it out specifically because I thought it looked really nice I'm going to put it over here and 
feel like we ought to put a bulb pin on just because they're there and they're shiny. This one's sort of metallic. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but it's a sort of metallic green as well. So it just gives a little bit of a different surface in amongst everything else. So that's my last stitch, I think. I might need to put a stitch just to hold the bulb pin down. But let's put a bulb pin. I'm going to drop that and see if it stays. There we go. Right over to the side. So let's just... Oh, T-shirt yarn. I can't get it through. scoop it and see what it will latch onto. There we go. Right. Oi! I'm just meeting my mic again. Just get those out of the way. So I'm going to bring my aperture back and let's see what it looks like. Oh, I just love that. Absolutely love it. I didn't, I honestly didn't think I was going to. I really was having second thoughts. And you can't do anything about it in a live stream, can you? Because it's live. <laughs> but um, that's our finished piece. So. A great mix of randomness and control. We've got our decorative lines of stitch. Let me see if I can bring it a bit closer so that you can see it even more. Just waiting for the camera to find it. Um, so we've got our decorative lines of stitch in there as well and some sequins and beads and most of that has just been added where it landed so this has been all about playing the ball where it lies and seeing what happens so i love how or we've talked a lot about rock pools and beaches and forests and things like that this session so I just quite like that that looks like it could be a rock pool or it could be something from the forest floor so that's it you're all so lovely I, I <laughs> I'm just scanning through your comments and I, I feel vaguely I find it very hard to take compliments but you you're just so lovely um and yeah i'm just so glad that we've all discovered each other and are making lovely things together so um sherry i'm so glad you were able to join us this time i hope you're joining next time it's going to be fun and not quite as chaotic <laughs> and edge of our seat stuff as this one has been so it's a lot more controlled next time next week's video is going to be just i can't wait for that one to come out and um, I'm so glad that you're all just loving stitching and playing around with textures and fabrics and threads. It just makes my day. And if I can be a part of helping you do that, then that's uh, it makes it all worthwhile. So thank you so much. So we're going to finish there. Have a great afternoon stitching and enjoying the sun and doing lots of fun things. And I'm going to go and see my family and i'll see you all next week look out for our stitch tutorial video hoping that's going to go live tomorrow i've just got to upload it and um so yeah there'll be some nice stitches to learn and i will see you all next week have a great rest of your day and i'll see you soon love you lots bye